It's funny in looking into the relation of this one, because I have done some research in regards to most of it. Apparently, the whole history of contemporary bullfighting is based on the fact that Picador, the Picador in the bullfighting ring is the person who prods the bull with the reins. At this point, they, pay, they play a rather a lower key position to the, uh, the matador. In places where this rather kind of rough practice still does go on. However, the matador was never, was not in the beginning the star of this kind of scenario. It was the picador. But the audience became very bored with the picadors because they were not very active in the pursuit of their job. Slightly more rock and roll. And this is the final of the 60 uh, of the set, more or less. Um, what I'd like to do now is share with you uh, a, what is more or less an animated, time based version of this project, which is currently in development. Uh, it's short, more or less a trailer. Uh, kind of adds a little bit more, um, <clears throat> perhaps it's not effective, but I think now that you're aware of the elements, it uh, can work well. Uh, it is going to be, let me just make sure it comes up here, hit the floor. Okay, now if anybody here uh, is sensitive to strobos stroboscopic effects, I do not know if this this is very stroboscopic, so if you're, if you might, if, if this could induce seizure for any reason, it's a very serious warning, as I'm not sure. This has never been shown to a public audience, so please beware. It's not meant to, I'm not trying to hurt anybody here, but these things can happen when you flashlights very quickly. <laughs>
I should credit uh, Aaron Anderson, my dear colleague, facing here and sitting for letting hand the animation and some of these things. Um, that's what I have for you today. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this faculty colloquium. And I'm open to taking questions if there are any out there. Before you take any, you have to give one. Oh, that's right. I've been, I, this has been, this is, this may be the most difficult part of this presentation. If you could, uh, if you could all name five, the five most important locations, and when I say location, kind of site, place, uh, in your life, a specific place, not just a home. An address, a, a real a place in the world, point on that, and then give one sentence as to why that is the case. Ah, well, that's interesting. I, I, I'm, I've been waiting for the right moment to actually publish a site that would comprehensively deal with kind of my, my practice. And that moment is fast approaching. Um, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily have the kind of like, it, it, a lot of these things in terms of like unveiling yourself to the world, a lot of them are about timing. And sharing a comprehensive site is something I look forward to. It would help make sense of a little bit more of this if you have more pieces of the puzzle. But, um, I do happen to appreciate a lot of professionals who also think that being in the shadows is more effective than being in the light. And there is something to protecting one's intellectual research um, in this day and age. If you post it, it's public. So depending on what you're working on. Uh, this stuff, the, the anagram stuff, for instance, I haven't really posted it because it would be pretty portable if somebody wanted. I'm not against the internet. Any more questions? Do you have a personal interest, if you do, which I think you do based on what I'm seeing, uh, in repetition or excess or multiple? I, I, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think of it that way. Um, in terms of, in terms of both of these projects, that the repetition or the, the accept the, the parameters are based on the situation in which I find myself. There has to be enough variation within a parameter, which may become the excessive part. Of the forty, the product, for instance, without the forty-four benches, the project wouldn't wouldn't have had impetus. There wouldn't have been a, a rationale. It wouldn't have been out of the ordinary. Um, I think I'm drawn to challenges, and so maybe repetition and excess would be there. I, in my my hand, in the practice of my studio, it's certainly not manifested kind of repetition and endurance-based work. Though again, in the past, sometimes I've accidentally been involved in really endurance-based projects. Um, but you know, if I could figure out a way to kind of make them more manageable, I would. I don't think I, it's not what motivates me. I don't try to come up with situations that are really. Uh, Difficult for myself, though I, I do do that. Uh, yeah, about your bench project, uh, do you think you might ever replicate that for another museum work? I have replicated certain pieces and systems in different situations in the past. I found that it's very tricky to do. The rationale for that, my, my interest in making that piece was really fulfilled and very specific. Um, one can imagine that it could be done in another museum next to another park. I would be, I, would, I don't think I would necessarily be interested, as, very interested in doing that. If someone approached me and it was the right kind of situation, if it was a, similar enough I might find interest there, but when I've remade pieces in the past or performed certain things again in a new context, I've generally found it to be pretty unsatisfying. 
Um, and, you know, I mean, I suppose if someone's paying you a lot of money to do it, you might do it, but I, that hasn't been the case. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to go to, a system could be generated from it, a different kind of system. But if anything, I think that that piece led me to think a lot more about park space as a very productive realm for cultural production, um, as opposed to, instead of museum space. I mean, more or less everything truly at this point has been done in museums, so the park offers us a different kind of world. It's, it, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard for me to tell. Um, I, they're there. I think that people have the, the museum didn't really know what to do with the project, and nor did the park board. So they, no one promoted it per se. Um, it was blogged about a little bit, but there and there have been some people who post photos or you know some relation to it, but there haven't been any tangible returns that I that I know of. I mean, there have been a spike in attendance from the park population. Ultimately, the challenges which I was kind of trying to undertake uh, or look at are bigger than just a simple gesture like that to kind of create flow between the public and, or the outside and the inside is a pretty big thing. So it's just a step towards it. Hopefully, hopefully some guards are enjoying it being out the window. It's a little bit tricky. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. All right, well thank you very much everybody.